Today we're going to be calculating the kinetic energy of a falling object and we're going to see that sometimes in order to determine that kinetic energy we need to use tools from the past. In this case free falling objects, what we learned about free falling objects and also using those kinematic equations. Okay, we're going to say we have a little puppy, he climbed up a ladder, and he dropped his bone. I know the actual problem is a ball being dropped, but that's so common. Let's make a puppy crawl up a ladder because, you know, you see puppies crawl up ladders all the time. Uh, let's take a look at this problem. So we have our ball. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We said we were going to make it a little dog bone. My puppy is sitting right here. He is half appreciating me making a dog bone and half feeling as if he's being teased. And he says, uh, Mom, that doesn't look like a dog bone in any way, shape, or form. So let's go ahead and fix this. So we have a dog bone. We drop it. And here's the ground. And we want to understand what is going on about halfway, halfway down. Again, the first step to ever solving, the first step is always to solving a problem is always going to be to change the representation and get it in a sketch. Um, it is very, very difficult to solve a problem when you're just staring at all of those words and those words have absolutely no meaning. It's almost as difficult as trying to draw a dog bone and making it look the same two times. So when we're dealing with energy, just like when we did projectile motion, we're going to be drawing our object in the two different locations. So this is the initial position this is the final position and of course the final position in real life will be when it hits the ground before the dog runs and comes and picks it up but this final position final position is always the position in which you're interested at now we're starting out 20 meters above the ground but we're interested in what happens after it falls halfway and so half of 20 is 10 meters so we're interested, hey, what is it doing when it hits, uh, when it gets to that halfway point? More specifically, we're wondering what is that kinetic energy at this final moment? So I could call this uh, zero for my initial moment. I could call this one for my final moment. That does not represent zero seconds in one second. It's just completely arbitrary numbers that I chose. And then, of course, down here, once it hits the ground, maybe we could define that as a moment as well. Maybe that'll be moment two. So if we wanted to take a look at the kinetic energy of this bone, let's take a look. What is the kinetic energy of this bone at moment zero? What is the kinetic energy of the bone at moment one? And what is the kinetic energy of the bone at moment two? Well, we know that the mass of the bone, we were given that, is 0.5 kilograms and the velocity of the bone well if it's being dropped the velocity of the bone up here is just zero meters per second because we're not throwing that bone down we're just releasing it we're dropping it so instantaneously right there is zero meters per second when it gets here what would the velocity be when it gets here well this is a throwback to when we worked on projectile motion. So in order to determine what the velocity of that bone will be right here, I think to myself, well, I know how far the bone dropped from here to here, and I know that, well, I guess I'm assuming that I'm on planet Earth. So if I know the acceleration and I know the distance that that bone dropped, I would be able to use this absolutely wonderful kinematic equation if you remember that there you go and I'm choosing this one because this is the kinematic equation that does not have time in it it doesn't have time so I don't know the time this is a good one to use so I'm trying to figure out what is the velocity at this moment so my initial velocity here was zero so actually I'm just gonna cross that right out 
my acceleration's negative 9.8, my final position, well, we knew that's halfway, so that's going to be 10, and my initial position way up here is 20. Now don't forget here, when we take the square root of a number, we're going to end up with either negative or positive 14. And this is the point where we say, okay, is it going to be negative or is it going to be positive? We have to go back to the actual problem and say, okay, here I know my velocity is going down. So I'm choosing negative because that's the only thing that makes sense. So after all of that side work, and again, if I was doing this on paper, of course, I wouldn't keep erasing my side work. My velocity at this moment here is negative 14 meters per second. And when it hits the ground, it's zero meters per second, right? No. These objects get faster and faster and faster and faster. And when it hits the ground, it's going to be at its fastest velocity. We're not saying after it hits the ground, we're saying when it hits the ground. So we're going to use the same technique to figure out the velocity too. All right, so using the same technique, uh, kinematic equations that we used up here, we find out the velocity when it hits the ground. And again, we take the square root, we decide it's negative because we already know that it's moving down, is negative 19.8 meters per second. You notice what I'm doing for this problem is I'm, I'm pulling out what the variables are for each and every moment, what those important variables are for each and every single moment. Also up here, my y value at the top is 20 meters. My y value at moment 1 is just 10 meters, and at moment 2 is 0 meters. So I can go ahead and calculate, you know what, let's not just calculate the kinetic energy, let's also calculate that potential energy, we might as well, for each and every moment. So at moment one, remember that kinetic energy is equal to one-half the mass times the velocity squared. We're just going to move this over just a little bit. One-half mass times velocity squared. So we're just going to plug in these values and determine what the kinetic energy and potential energy is at every moment. So for this moment, we're going to use these variables, and it's going to be the same all the way down. Now if we also want to calculate that potential energy, which we didn't talk about, I just threw that in there at the last moment, we'll remember that potential energy is equal to the weight of an object, which is mg, times that uh, position of the object above the ground. So we're just going to go ahead and plug in all of the variables that match the given moments. And look how beautiful this is. We have kinetic energy in that initial moment is zero joules. However, it has a lot of potential energy because it's high off the ground is 98 joules. Halfway through, our kinetic energy is 49 joules, and our potential energy is 49 joules. And then at the bottom, our, we only have kinetic energy and zero potential energy. So in this particular problem, all of the potential energy got converted into kinetic energy as the doggy bone fell, or the ball, or the set of eyeglasses, or whatever you want to consider falling. Make it, anything you want to consider falling, that 0.5 kilograms. Make it a great day. Ask your questions below in the comments.